about what the core is. I think a lot of people are confused about exactly what their core musculature is and what exercises to do to strengthen the core. Many people will just do ab exercises, a lot of crunches, a lot of sit-ups, and say, oh, I worked my core. Now, arguably, yes, if you do those exercises, you're working your core. But you can say that about many exercises. Why? Because you need your core to accomplish many things, like standing shoulder press. If my core wasn't engaged, I would drop to the floor, I would not be able to do the shoulder press. Squats. If my back and my stomach and my glutes and all those muscles weren't working, then I wouldn't be able to hold the bar on my back so that I could actually do the squats. So yes, you work your core in a variety of different ways when you do different exercises. However, there are specific muscle groups and specific exercises that you can do to strengthen your core alone so that when you go to do exercises that involve your appendages like your arms and your legs, you're that much more prepared for them and less likely to get injured and you will probably be able to do more weight. So, the core is an interesting thing. It encompasses many different muscles. And if I really had to classify it, I would classify it as the symphony of movements that happen between your glutes, the very bottom where your hamstrings insert, and your neck, the bottom where your cervical spine attaches to basically your shoulders, and then between your shoulder blades. So all those muscles in between there, so that would include your glutes, yes, your abs, but it also includes things like your transverse abdominis, your obliques, your serratus muscles. I would also include your rotator cuff muscles in that, your rhomboids. So anything that's not an appendage, your arms, your legs, your head, is basically going to be your core. So you have to know exercises to strengthen those areas. Are there a lot? There are. But I'm going to show you four that when put back to back are considered to me a super core program because they really focus in on those areas. You're not going to be doing bicep curls, you're not going to be doing squats during the movements, you're just going to focus in on those muscles that are in between in that area and you're going to hammer in on those specific muscles even if they're really small. This way you will be stronger when you go to do those bigger lifts. So check it out. Okay, the first core exercise in this routine would be a plank or a bridge, whatever you want to call it. And it's going to be a prone plank. So, I've done this before, it's in my warm-up video, but I just want to show you again. So basically you want to keep a nice straight line between your shoulders and your heels, and don't let your butt sag, and don't let your back arch. You want to squeeze your stomach, keep your butt up slightly, so that your back is nice and flat, as if you could balance a glass of water right on it, like a tabletop. You, you'll need to tighten every muscle to make this happen. So even though the focus for you might be, oh, I feel this in my elbows or I feel it in my shoulders, if you don't make a connection with every muscle in your body, it's going to be very hard to hold this position. I just wanted to give you another angle here. You can see the back is flat and everything is tight. And here is yet another angle from the side. Same thing, the back looks like a tabletop. You could put a glass of water up there and it would stay. Okay, the next super core exercise would be lying hip abduction. And this is literally straight from Jane Fonda circa 1980. Now, she didn't actually invent it, but it's still relevant today. It's a simple movement, but it's very relevant to your glute strength. So, you're gonna wanna lie on your side, make you comfortable, Put your arm as a pillow here, or you can even put a pillow. And then what you're going to do is make sure you have a straight line from shoulders to heels. And your top leg will come back, or what we call extended slightly. And you're going to turn your toe down to the ground, and then you're going to lift it up, just like this. Super simple, but you want to make sure that you feel the work happening from your glute. If you open your hip too much, up to the ceiling, then you're not going to use the right muscles. So if anything, you want to kind of turn your hip in a little bit, and then make sure that leg stays extended back, toe down, and bring it up and down, up and down. Simple, right? See how many reps you can do. Here's another angle, and you want to make sure your glute's working when you do this. And the way you can do that is just put a finger right there on your glute medius as you're abducting your leg. 
you push in and you feel the resistance as if your glute was pushing your thumb or your finger out, then you know that you're firing the right muscle. It's a good way to check yourself. You want to make sure that hip is turned over. Here's another angle right here. As you can see, the separation between both my feet and the, and the toe pointed down is very important. You want to keep that leg extended. And here's another angle for you. Same thing. Make sure that your glute is working. Okay, the next exercise, I'm still going to lie down for. Isn't that great? We're talking about an exercise routine here where you don't even have to get up off the mat. It's pretty amazing, right? Okay. So, we're going to do lying external rotations. I'm going to lie down. And this time I'm going to prop my head up. You don't have to though, you could lay down, but for me it's more comfortable this way. I'm going to take a light weight, anywhere from 2 to 7 pounds. And then I'm going to make sure my arm has a 90 degree angle in it. I don't want too tight of an angle or too far open, I want to keep it 90 degrees. My elbow is going to be situated right here on my side. If you have something like a towel handy, you can put it right here and you're just going to put your arm right on that so that you can hold your spot and you know that you don't move around. You don't need to do it with anything. I'm, I'm using my yoga strap. You don't need to do it with anything, but it does help to have something there. But if you don't have it, again, don't worry about it. Put your elbow right there on your side, keep the 90 degree angle, and then you're just going to externally rotate. You don't want to let your shoulder come back too far. Basically, straight up and down is perfect. And then all the way back down, and then right back up. Try not to let it rest in between. Keep the tension there and just kind of get the reps going. See how many you can do. Here's a tighter view so you can see that my elbow is right on my side. And again, if you have a towel or just something soft, you can put it right in there. And you see the 90 degree angle I have there with my arm. Here's a view from the side or the back side. And you can see when I externally rotate my shoulder, I don't go too far just until it gets vertical. The fourth exercise is going to be prone wise on stability ball. Basically, that those are fancy terms for I'm going to lie with my face facing the floor on top of the stability ball and I'm going to hold this dowel so that my arms are in a Y position. So if they were straight out, that would not be a Y. If they were straight out this way, it would be a T. You basically want to create a Y. So if you look at your arms and you don't have a dowel, that's okay. You just literally put your arms out so that you were creating a Y with your whole body. So my core and my legs are the base of the Y and then I extend my arms out. If you have a dowel or a light pole, that's great. And eventually you want to graduate to holding weights. But initially, it's fine to practice it like this. So I'm going to hold myself up nice and straight on the stability ball. I'm going to put my arms out in that Y position, and then I'm going to let it come all the way down, and then bring it up as high as I can, down and up. And it seems very simple, but it's actually quite difficult and challenging. Here's a different view for you. As you're coming up with the Y, you want to make sure that you're squeezing your shoulder blades. The reps will start to get difficult, and this will get tiring and you'll try and raise your arms any way possible. Don't fling them. Constantly try and squeeze the shoulder blades and squeeze your stomach as well as it will help you get through all of the repetitions. So that was your super core workout. Four very simple exercises. And the way that I want you to work the routine is simple. I want you to try for two minute bridge. If you can't get two minutes all at once, that's fine. Work your way up to it by doing 30 second intervals or 45 second intervals or one minute intervals, whatever works for you until you can get to two minutes. Then when you do your lying hip abduction, 30 to 50 reps and the same for your external rotation and your prone wise, 30 to 50 reps. Do two complete rounds of that. Think of it as a circuit and do it for two rounds and then you have your super core routine done. It should take you, you know, 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes max if you're taking your time in between each, and that's fine. So it was a great core workout. Again, it'll help you get stronger in your other lifts. It'll help you prevent injuries when you're doing other exercises, even if it's not lifting weights, even if you're a runner or a biker or rower. If you do these exercises, it will help with injury prevention. And if you already have a nagging ache or pain or injury, 
a lot of these exercises can help rehab that. So have fun with them. Thanks.